Yeah, I wanted to mention something about the Jason Kenney government. Um, you know, I was supportive of Jason Kenney and I gave him a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, kind of room to to maneuver. And I was in, in, in fairly regular contact with the Ministry of Health under Jason Kenney's government. Now they said, look, this has to be on the down low. We, we, we can't let people know that, you know, we're in contact with you. We know about your lawsuits. We know about your legal cases. We know about the court fraud that AHS is committing in court. You know, we know all of this, right? And so I said, okay, well, when are you guys going to do something about it, yeah. right? And they said, well, oh, the pandemic just hit. Oh, the optics are really bad. Uh, so we can't make any changes at AHS because, you know, it would look, the optics would be really bad. Uh, you know, we can't start changing management at Alberta Health Services. And I quickly realized that, Jason Kenney's government had completely capitulated when it came to corruption in healthcare in Alberta. Um, and this didn't seem to be the case in the beginning. In the beginning, it seemed like they really wanted to take on the corruption. And, and really the evidence of that I had was that the health minister, Tyler Shandro, had canceled unilaterally the $5.4 billion contract, doctor's contract with Alberta Health Services that was paying doctors salaries. And what essentially happened was the doctors would just continue to bill the government a month to month, the same that they had been billing previously, but there was no longer this master agreement between doctors, Alberta Health Services, and the provincial government. And when the health minister canceled this contract, he didn't say it was because there was so much fraud that was being committed by Alberta Health Services executives uh, using, you know, dipping their hands into the money, into this money that was intended for patient care. But really, it, it seemed like they were really getting ready to tackle corruption at Alberta Health Services. Um, what the health minister then did, he did a review of uh, Alberta Health Services management. And this was done by Ernst & Young. And they published a report showing that Alberta Health Services has 3,200 managers that they employ. Out of those 3,200 managers, 1,000 are completely unnecessary. They're completely useless. They literally have almost nobody reporting to them. So these are just uh, positions that, you know, uh, friends of HS executives or family members had given to each other. Um, and then another 1,000 positions were, you know, such that you could probably eliminate them with no change to healthcare at all. And so out of 3,200 Alberta Health Services managers, 2,000 of them were completely unnecessary. And then the health minister, Tyler Chandra, had said, oh, that's great. We're going to now implement, you know, serious changes in the management and mismanagement of Alberta Health Services. You know, you have managers who make anywhere from $200,000 to $700,000 a year. You have 2,000 of these managers who are completely unnecessary. Now you can do the math on this, uh, how much money that costs Alberta taxpayers every year. Um, and so Tyler Shandro, the health minister, had come out and said, okay, we're going to do something about this. We're going to implement the recommendations of this uh, review, and we're going to start by firing 100 AHS managers, and we'll go from there. Then the pandemic hit, and you never heard about this again. So Jason Kenney's government had completely failed Albertans when it came to healthcare corruption. However, they knew exactly what was going on. In fact, they knew that the college had held my license hostage. They knew that the college had dragged me through a fraudulent tribunal where they ran up the costs of that tribunal to $70,000, where college employees were testifying against me. College employees who, who never knew me, had never met me, were testifying against me for two days. And then they took that $70,000 penalty and they extorted and threatened my family, my children, and said, we're going to punish your family financially. If you don't give up your lawsuits uh, with AHS, we're going to destroy your medical license. We'll make sure you never practice uh, anywhere uh, again, not just Alberta, but really internationally. We'll make sure you're never able to practice medicine again unless you give up your lawsuits. And when I refused uh, this extortion, what they did was they filed the penalty against me. They, they concluded that, they, that I'm guilty of some unprofessional conduct that they made up. 
And they said that I had to um, submit myself to psychiatric testing to see if I'm even fit to practice medicine. Otherwise, within 40 days um, with their doctor, otherwise that they would suspend my medical license permanently. Oh. And what happened was uh, shortly thereafter, the court had stepped in and the court said, OK, we're we're freezing um, everything that's happening with with my case, except the lawsuits. Uh, so the college couldn't suspend my license on those grounds. Uh, so what they did was they actually violated the court order, uh, which said that everything has to be frozen in my case. And what they did was they said, well, you didn't pay the 70,000 family that we $70,000 penalty that we threatened or extorted your family with. Uh, and because you didn't pay that $70,000 extortion fee, we're suspending your license for non-payment. So now when you go on the college website, it says that I'm inactive and that my license was canceled for non-payment, non-payment of the $70,000 extortion fee that they threatened my children and my family with. Now, I will tell you, Tyler Shandro, Alberta's health minister, knows this. He is 100% aware of this because I sent him the legal documentation. I sent him the letter. He acknowledged it. And that's it. He, you know, like they didn't do anything about it, but they're aware of this. Jason Kenny actually followed me on Twitter before he was um, elected Alberta premier. Uh, just shortly before uh, May 2019, he was following me on Twitter and he was following my posts about Alberta corruption and what was happening at the college. I had documented all of this online on Twitter. So Jason Kenny knew exactly what was happening to me at AHS and the college. They both refused to do anything about it. And so, you know, people, I think Albertans are angry enough at Jason Kenny. Uh, that's why they booted him. I think you know, the, the fact that he got himself, uh, you know, 51% support, which was probably heavily massaged to get it to that point, uh, even. And I think the fact that he he finally decided to resign because Albertans were fed up and had enough of, of his basically letting the corrupt healthcare executives run rampant with no control um, and, and no, you know, no attempt by the government to rein them in. And so Jason Kenney, in my view, was a complete failure uh, as a politician, as a leader, uh, really as an individual. And they knew exactly what had happened to me, my cancer program. And so Danielle Smith, I think, is aware of, of some of the issues that have been happening. And really, you know, for her to say that the college deserves to be dissolved and that the AHS leadership deserves to be fired, mm -hmm. you know, I think she's aware of a lot of corruption that is going on. And I think it's great. And she's going to be attacked for this. Any attempt that she makes to clean up corruption in Alberta, you're going to see she's going to be crucified in the media for it. Uh, the media is completely in bed with healthcare executives in Alberta. Uh, the media has actually protected um, the AHS leadership from being exposed for corruption. Uh, they always uh, back up, uh, let's say, what Dr. Verna Yu was doing, and they always made sure that they covered up any corruption or scandals that were about to leak from AHS. I was actually in touch with several uh, prominent journalists, two investigative journalists from CBC, Charles Russell and Jenny Russell. Actually, I gave them documents, court documents, I gave them my statements of claim, I gave them a number of affidavits, and they looked at it and they said, oh, we're, we, we, we're not going to run your story, we can't, don't send us any more, don't, don't send us they any won't more, touch it. But, don't send but us any more court you're, you're dealing with high level criminals, I mean, the lawyer Craig Boyer, whose family has run the show for 40, 50 years, yeah. and then you've got Dr. Michael Kafaro. I mean, these are, these are criminals high level criminals yeah. who are not going to be toppled easily. No, not so easily. Danielle That's Smith true. has a work cut out for her because Absolutely. this is very, very high level crime. I would call it, it is, it's, it's mafia style. I call it, um, they're organized. So it's, it's a form of organized crime, but it's white collar crime. So what, what they yeah. do, it's white collar organized crime. And what they do is really, they exploit the loopholes in the legal system in the law. So for example, the Health Professions Act, which governs the practice of medicine in Alberta has far too many loopholes 
that these college lawyers exploit to abuse doctors, to harass doctors, to destroy their careers. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you have an Alberta doctor who committed suicide because of the pressure that college lawyers put on him, his medical license, his medical career, and his family, I mean, we're dealing with some very serious crimes. This is not just like, well, you know, you can slap them with a civil penalty yeah. or you can, you know, sue them for a few million dollars. These are these are these are crimes. This is um, this is not just civil crimes. It's, these are actual this, is crim this is criminal and crimes. these people belong behind bars. So they I belong just, in jail. Absolutely. I, absolutely. And I hope that Daniel Smith is swift and very exact and precise in her uh collapsing this existing system because I think she needs to I think she needs to act fast because these people have allies who are billionaires. I mean they have allies in the pharmaceutical industry. The pharmaceutical industry is a multi multi billion dollar juggernaut. Uh, they have allies in the construction industry. Like I said, I was shocked when I was blocked by PCL construction on Twitter that had just received several multi billion dollar uh, contracts from Alberta Health Services and Rachel Notley's NDP government that had just, you know, gotten into power. Uh, so these people have very powerful allies. And of course, the media, the media is completely, I mean, safe for a few independent media outlets, uh, you know, so when it comes to my, my report on doctors dying suddenly and unexpectedly, I have to give credit to a number of, of independent media outlets. Uh, there's Odessa Orlowitz at Liberty.com. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Rebel News. Uh, Tamara, who's the reporter for Rebel News, actually ran a story about this. Uh, the Western uh, Standard News, uh, Matthew Harwood, uh, who's a journalist there. So these journalists have, these independent media journalists have really had the courage to come out and actually go against the narrative of the healthcare executives and healthcare establishment in Alberta. Because certainly, if you look at Alberta Health Services or the, or the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta, have been silent even on the doctor deaths. They yeah. don't care. You know, I mean, you could have hundreds, you could have thousands of doctors die. They wouldn't care. They absolutely, they don't care about anybody. All they care about is money and power and their political connections and how they can continue to exercise their power. So, you know, I mean, I have a lot of advice and knowledge that I can give to Danielle Smith and share with Danielle Smith. Uh, I will definitely be in touch with, with some of the individuals who are close to Danielle Smith. Um, my intention also is to give the full database on the Canadian doctor deaths uh, to Danielle Smith and, and her people, you know, to evaluate and, and see if there's anything that the Alberta government can do um, about this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mm -hmm. one short advice that I, I would give to Danielle Smith is act quickly quickly, and, act, and act decisively. Uh, don't waffle um, on, uh, you know, or backtrack or give these people some mercy or some second chance because these individuals have been committing crimes They've been killing patients. They've been stealing millions and millions of dollars from physician patient care funds for years. And they've been doing this out in the open. They're not afraid because they know that the legal system and, in, and the judicial system in Alberta protects them. So they know that the law society will never come after the lawyers. Yeah. They, they, know they have immunity and they know it. They're yeah. in a position of power and Oh, my goodness. Well, I tell you, uh, Dr. William Mackis, your story is um, outstanding, but heartbreaking at the same time, because it, it, it really represents corruption at, at such a high level. However, I think there's hope. Thank goodness yeah. for Danielle Smith. I think there's a bright future in store for Albertans. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I do hope that you're able to work in some capacity with her, at least impart all the information that you have. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, I used to say that, you know, if, if, if anyone took my legal documents that I have, they would end the careers of Rachel Notley, Sarah Hoffman, and really all of NDP for a generation because... Yeah. Um, you know, the people that Rachel Notley and Sarah Hoffman appointed at Alberta Health Services are the people that have commit, been committing crimes against Alberta cancer patients, 
and against Alberta COVID patients, um, you know, for the past uh, several years, uh, and they continue to do so with impunity. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I've, I've always said that if anybody just had the will, they could literally end Alberta NDP as we know it uh, tomorrow, you know, that they could certainly end the careers, the political careers of Rachel Notley and Sarah Hoffman, who are in government solely because they're being protected by the media who refuse to, to, to really report on this. Now, I've been in court almost 20 times. Uh, I've been before over a dozen Alberta judges, so I know the Alberta judges very well. Some of them are really good, some of them are really bad, and some of them are just outright corrupt. So it's a mixed bag when it comes to Alberta judges. And I've interacted with Alberta Health Services lawyers for six years uh, and college lawyers for the past six years, whether it's Craig Boyer for the college, whether it's Mylene Tiesen for the college, whether it's um, Mark Raven Jackson for Alberta Health Services and Field Law LLP, which provides all the legal services in my case for Alberta Health Services. These are some of the worst individuals, some of the worst human beings you've ever seen in your life. They've threatened my family repeatedly. They've threatened my children. They've threatened my family in writing. The Law Society of Alberta knows about this. They receive the documents. The Edmonton Police knows about this. The RCMP knows about this. They all know about it. They all protect each other, right? And so Danielle Smith has her work cut out for her. Um, I definitely have high hopes for her. And if she sur surrounds herself with the right people and, and really acts decisively and swiftly, she can cut the, cut the head off the snake uh, at the college and at AHS, because once you remove the top people from the position of power, once you remove their access to lawyers, these people have, they, they can't do anything on their own. No. They they really rely on the structure that's been put in place for them and the lawyers that they rely on to, to commit their crimes. On their own, these doctors are grossly incompetent. Mm -hmm. Verna Yu is an incompetent doctor. Dina Hinshaw is an incompetent doctor. Dr. Michael Cafaro is an incompetent doctor. These doctors cannot do anything on their own unless it's done by their lawyers for them. And then they rubber stamp whatever legal documents are put in front of them. They probably don't even read it and put their name on it and pretend like it's them making the decisions that Hinshaw is making decisions, you know, that Dr. Michael Cafaro at the college is making the decisions. Mm -hmm. They're not. I mean, the, you know, that's it's the lawyers that are doing the work for them. So Danielle Smith has to act quickly, decisively. And and here's another thing I think it's it's um, and I don't know if it's feasible, but I, I would suggest that Danielle Smith at least consider exposing some of the scandals that have happened at Alberta Health Services and the college so Albertans know what's actually happening. Now, she doesn't have to expose what's happened to me. Uh, she can expose what's happened to other doctors. There's Dr. Robert uh, Nordal, who had the exact same thing happen to him. Now, he was, he was treating cancer patients with cutting-edge gamma knife uh, treatments. He was treating a brain cancer patients with gamma knife. And what they did was they dragged him out of, and, and they actually dragged, dragged him out while he was doing a procedure. They paid him out his contract right away. So they didn't uh, frame him with a fake complaint like they framed me. And uh, they said, here's your money. Here's your severance payout and get out of here. And he said, no. And he fought them for three years. He fought them through a different process than I did. Um, because they made the mistake of suspending his hospital privileges immediately. So he actually went to the government and went through the hospital privileges appeal board, which ordered AHS to take him back. AHS refused. The hospital privileges appeal board went to court and had the court order AHS to take him back. And you know how long that took? It took four years for him to be able to get back to his office to work. Same AHS executives who did it to me did it to him. And in the court decision ordering him back to work, the same head of AHS Cancer Care appointed by Rachel Notley, Dr. Matthew Parliament, you know what he said under oath? He said, AHS makes $15 billion in revenue. Now, this is the money that the provincial government gives to AHS every, this is taxpayer money. This isn't revenue. He said, we make $15 billion in revenue if we, you know, screwed over this one doctor and we have to pay him 
uh, penalties, AHS has more than uh, enough money to, to cover the penalties that we'll have to pay in this case. He said this under oath and the court recorded it in their court decision. Uh, so this is the attitude that you know we face with Alberta's healthcare executives. They think that the taxpayer money, the the twenty plus billion dollars that goes into healthcare, they think it's their money. They think it's their yeah. revenue. They think it's like a business that they run, that this is their revenue, and that they can go ahead and make multi billion dollar deals with pharmaceutical companies and with construction companies, and that they're the gods of of healthcare in Alberta. They make the decisions. And that, you know, Jason Kenney and Tyler Shandro, the health minister, they can go pound sand because they're more powerful than the premier of Alberta. Yeah. Right. So Danielle Smith can really chop off the, the head of the snake, um, cut off the uh, AHS management, cut off the, uh, well, you really can't cut off the leadership at the college. You have to dissolve the college. And, yeah. and I think that's why she said that, because imagine she could have just said, Oh, well, I'm going to fire the, the college registrar. She didn't say that. Why? Because the registrar doesn't run the college. Yeah. The college is a private corporation run by lawyers. That's why she said the college has to be dissolved entirely. Yeah. And, and, and really, the in, entire institution has to be dissolved top to bottom, reconstitute a new medical board, start start over, start, start fresh, start clean, put in new competent people. And this will be popular with Albertans. Um, if she does expose just a fraction of the scandals that have been happening in healthcare, and really most of it been being done by Rachel Notley's people. Um, this will be very popular with Albertans. Uh, any changes that she makes at Alberta Health Services will be very popular with Albertans. And I suspect that this will significantly increase her popularity all across Alberta. And really, I personally believe that she has everything that it takes to completely wipe the floor with Rachel Notley in 2023 and make NDP completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. NDP is extremely dangerous right now. They've become very extremist. Uh, Rachel Notley is talking about creating teams uh, that will go door to door vaccinating anyone who's still unvaccinated for COVID-19. She wants to go, she wants to set up uh, healthcare teams that will go door to door uh, unannounced uh, trying to vaccinate people who still haven't been vaccinated. She has supported vaccine mandates, illegal vaccine mandates um, in Alberta's healthcare when we still had them. She was fully supportive of unvaccinated nurses getting fired and having their careers destroyed. Uh, and she continues to push mRNA vaccines, vaccine mandates, and God only knows what she's going to do if she gets into power in 2023 in Alberta. She's going to bring everything back. She's going to bring vaccine mandates back. She's going to empower the AHS executives and college executives that are threatening doctors and, and suppressing doctors that are speaking out about uh, mRNA vaccine injuries. And so we're going to face a an, 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 an terrible nightmare if Rachel Notley gets back into power. Yeah. Well, I think... Um... Uh, there is hope. I think it's very, uh, there's room for optimism with Daniel Smith, like you say. And I think if she does expose some of the corruption and, and opens Albertans' eyes as to what has been going on behind the scene, that will put her in, in a better position that people understand why she is dismantling the existing system and starting from scratch. I agree with you, that's necessary. Well, Dr. William Mackis, this has been an incredible time together. Uh, you have really been through the ringer and I just really admire your, um, how would I say, doggedness and determination. And the fact that you're self-representing yourself at this point, you, how clever. So keep up the fight. Uh, your story is wonderful. You are uh, a great Canadian hero in my mind and I'm sure other listeners would agree. Um, so keep up the fight, keep on exposing the truth, uh, keep up, keep on digging on the, the deaths of physicians, because I think the whole world is watching, not yeah, just so Canadians, great. but it sounds as though you're, you're gathering data on a country that everyone around the world is interested in. So great work. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, we will talk again. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Thank you.